Hi everybody, it's Christy with Paper Hoarder Disorder. We are back again. This is video number two uh, in the decorating series, video series for the 6x6 six six, uh, boxed accordion album. Now this is the um, boxed mini album and I had made this one up last winter using Authentique's glistening paper. Uh, and the reason why I have this out is because this was the first time uh, that I did, uh, and this has been on display, by the way, for a, an entire year. <laughs> and it's been handled by hundreds of people, uh, probably a couple thousand times. Uh, and it still uh, looks like it's brand new. Um, as you can see, it really has stood up to the wear and tear, uh, even with white papers. And uh, just give you a little peek on the inside look, it still looks just like uh, just like brand new. So yeah, this is really a, a, a testament to um, the fact that these really do last and they don't get ratty. And uh, again, this is a display model. So, and it still is really standing up. So I just wanted to kind of share that with you guys. Uh, I just finally got it back. And uh, and so anyways, I, I, I have it out here because it was the first time I did this poinsettia. And this is the only one I have right now uh, in my craft room that shows a completed one. Uh, so you can see on here, now this one was misted. Uh, there is an easier way to do that uh, that I can show you. Uh, but let's go ahead and let's start with um, our brad center. So I created this little board and this is just a scrap piece of board and I can turn it to the side. It is about uh, a three quarter inch uh, deep piece of scrap wood. And I just took a, a drill bit and I drilled a bunch of little holes all the way through here uh, fairly evenly. And uh, so now um, that, and this is my drawing center. So I just take a simple, um, you know, the cheap office brads uh, that you can find at Walmart or, or any um, staples or office supply, whatever. Uh, you can probably even find them, uh, you know, at drugstores. Uh, so I just take a simple one like that. They also have some that are long if you really need, you know, that whole inch and a half um, length which I do use on occasion. Uh, so right here uh, I the nail polish I want to use is a white satin and maybe I can show it to you. The white satin is just really really beautiful. Uh, it's not really picking up the white satin part. Let me see here. It just looks white but it is it's got kind of a shimmer to it. Uh, without being a high shine. So anyways, it's a satin finish. And this is by Orly. This is called Au Champagne. So let me show you there. I love, love, love this polish. It's one of my favorites. Um, it's what I actually have on my nail here uh, on the white part uh, before I did the, the stripes on there. Uh, but instead of, um, it, it can be a little bit sheer and it can take up to three coats. So in order to um, make it go a little quicker, I use a white base. This is just a simple little $2 bottle from um, um, Walmart, uh, Pure Ice, and this one is called um, Superstar. So this is just a plain white. So we're going to use this as a base, and that way we only have to apply one coat of the lacquer on top of this. So we're going to use a little bit of white polish. And as you can see, I'm like tracing around the edges first, and then getting kind of thick on the top. I want to get a little bit more on there. Make it nice and smooth. So there you go. And then I'm going to take my tweezers and I'm going to grab the base and I'm going to just drop it in there. Now I've heard a lot of people say, we're going to go and do one more. I've heard a lot of people say, oh, well, I just stick mine in, in styrofoam. Well, and I think that, you know, uh, maybe that works, but in styrofoam, you actually have to have a, um, push it down in there, which can be a problem. Mine, you just drop. <laughs> so, I mean, if you had preset holes that were larger than you needed, maybe you could just drop it in there, which I think is really a critical part of it, um, to just be able to drop it in there rather than having to push it in there. 
so if you've got that, the only problem I see with that is that you would have to replace it, uh, you know, as the holes became too large. So anyways, I've got those two on there. So once those dry, I'm going to write in place. I'm just going to come over and I'll do one of these that's already dry and do it a second time. So I'll just come over here on one of these. Let's see if I'm in camera and I'll just add just to the top. I don't have to worry about the sides on this one because the sides are already white. So we just add a little bit to the top there. So that's how I do my uh, nail homemade nail polish brads. Uh, and I have oodles and oodles and oodles um, of nail polish. I mean, ridiculous amounts of nail polish. That's what I did before I did paper crafting. So I still, uh, and that's where my passions were, should I say. I wasn't paid for it. I just, you know, on just for my own nails. Uh, so that's how we do our brad for our center. So let me go and put this aside. And then... Out of, um, let's go ahead and put this aside as well. Using the Tim Holtz Tattered Poinsettia die, I cut out um, two sets um, of just white, white cardstock. And then I, um, let's see, I do not have, um, sometimes I'll do this on my glass mat, but right now I'm going to do it on um, my Mod Posh mat. Um, which looks like it has some stuff on it. So I'm going to go ahead and give it, get this a little cleaner. Not that it's going to matter too much. It's going to go on the back and it won't matter at all. I do like this Mod Podge mat. I also have uh, a Wilton um, silicone baking mat that I like to uh, paint on and uh, emboss on and I, just all that stuff. It's a, I prefer this to, oops. I prefer this one. Is it does it really not like it that much? <laughs> this might not work for camera. Okay, so that's oh there we go. Uh, okay, so let's try to put something white on here and hope that it focuses and there we go. So that's what it needed. <laughs> I, it needed a little bit of contrast, I think, to, to focus. <clears throat> so I had, there are multiple silicone mats that you can use, uh, and they just, they're very easy cleanup. I, I do have uh, the Tim Holtz mat. Um, I don't use it like I used to because I prefer these, uh, but yeah, each to their own. Okay, so what I need to do here is um, <clears throat> I'm going to take a little bit of... Now I've taken, oh, it did it again. Focus. Okay, so maybe that'll do, that'll work. Uh, okay, so I'm going to take a little bit of, um, uh, do I have the paint? Let's see. I normally have... I normally have all of this ready. Um, but I'm not finding the paint. Let's see here. This is probably, is this it? This might be it. Okay, so maybe it was this one. I didn't think it was this one. Uh, this one is Pearl White. It is by Folk Art. It's one of the metallics. And so I take a little bit of this and I put it into uh, the mister and um, or into just any old spray bottle. Uh, so this one has been all rinsed out and uh, I'm repurposing it. And so basically I fill it up about uh, not even a quarter of an inch with paint. And then I fill the rest of it with water. And then I shake it up really, really well and make sure that that's all spread out. Now, every time you go to use this, you need to shake it up again because it will settle on the bottom. Um, so with that... Um, Let's see, I'm going to use the top of this as what I did before. And if I could find my, let me get that away. If I could find, um, let's see, I do not see them on here. Again, I usually apologize. I usually have all of my things ready to go. 
will use a simple brush. Um, maybe there. Oh, here they are. Okay. I was going to say, uh, these are my favorite little things. These are Mod Podge, uh, little spouncers, little sponges here. And these are super fun. Uh, but you could use uh, just a, a regular little spongy brush. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to just take the cap of, of one of these. You can mist this on. Uh, and if it's not misting outright, it's probably because you have too much paint. Uh, you need a lot less paint for this uh making your own homemade glimmer mist than you think. Uh, but this one, I'm going to show you, uh, because it's, it tends to be a little cleaner to not mist it, I prefer misting. But you need to have like a, a, a box and you cut off one of the sides to it and I layer in uh, paper towels to absorb the excess and then I just put them on the, put the paper towel in there, lay these pieces on there and then mist them. Uh, and you can do that, and that's the way I prefer to do it, but that is completely up to you. So on this one, we're going to, I'm just going to get this kind of wet, but not soaking, and you can just, you can, you can dab it on there, or you can paint it on there, whatever you like. So now this, if you if the, you selected this, this has already been done for you, but you can see it does not take much, and that's going to start. See how it's got that variation in there? I really love that variation. Uh, you can paint them on, though, and it still looks good, and I did that with a bunch of them. Uh, it's quicker. Uh, you can just paint it on and get that light shimmer. There we go. And again, you don't want to get these soaking wet. You just want to get them covered. You don't want them soaking wet. And if you can see, we just turned that into a shimmer paper. There you go. You can kind of see it on there. There we go. See, it does not take much. And so you're going to want to do all of those. Let me go ahead and do some more. I'm going to just paint them on there. Okay, and then they don't take long to dry if you don't soak them. You see, I'm using very, very little. It does not take much. The if you soak them, uh, sometimes um, they uh, sometimes they start to fall apart on you, which is the next thing that we have to address, and that is that these things can be a little flimsy. And so I include reinforcers. Now, if, if, again, if you have purchased, uh, one of the, one of the pattern paper kits, the full or the complete, uh, with the pattern paper or with, uh, the, the pattern paper plus the interactives, then, um, I'm going to put this back in here. I know I'm going to spill it somewhere if I don't. So, um, then this is already done for you. And I'm just going to go ahead and clean that out. And this cleans up really quickly. Usually I just take this over to the sink and give it a good rinse. Uh, but I believe that you can just use a wet wipe and get it done. See how quickly that cleans up. I know that the Tim Holtz mat cleans up very quickly too, but this one, I don't have to worry about it cracking and all of that stuff. So it just, it just works better for me. So, um, all right. So we've got these and I can put that aside and we don't need those. So now that we have all six pieces uh, cut. Uh, we can get rid of them. Well, actually we can use that mat for just a minute more. Um, let me put that back on there so it doesn't do that. So with your, you had an option to um, either get these pre-made, like I will show you here. You can even either have them already painted and uh, embossed like this. Let me show you. 
already painted and embossed, so they're already shimmery and dry embossed. Or you can get, and you can get one set of those, or if you want to go the do-it-yourself route, then you will get two full sets to make two full flowers. Two. <laughs> two full flowers, and you will also get these reinforcers. And let me tell you what these reinforcers are for. Uh, they are uh, to... There to reinforce these these leaves like to pull off. Let's just put it that way. Uh, no matter what you do, they're very, very fragile. And um, much as I love Sizzix and uh, Tim Holtz dies, uh, these were kind of uh, these weren't well thought out as far as the design because they are very, very fragile. So on this on the larger ones, I'm using the one inch and I'm adding glue and I'm just going to stick that to the back. So I'm going to just stick that right in the center and I'm going to reinforce these. So again, you'll be, if you chose to get the two or if you're uh, just, if you just purchased the uh, decorating videos and you're doing this yourself, then I highly recommend uh, that you punch these circles. Again, these are one inches for the large ones and then I have three quarter inch circles. They do not have to be perfect and that just went glue side down <laughs> figures. And uh, three quarter inch for the medium. So just right in the center and you can see I'm putting that on the bottom there. But these are all going to be layered up. You'll never see it. And then on these, I used a half inch circle. These are all cut with uh, my EK Success uh, punches. I love that they have them in all those sizes now. They're, they're so easy to find. So again, we're just reinforcing that center so uh, we can minimize uh, loss of leaves. So, oops, they're rolling away. Okay, so we can put those up there. And so we're going to turn those into these. So let me go ahead and grab the embossing and show you how to do that. If you're uh, one of the do-it-yourselfers, um, let's see here. And I probably have it. right here okay so I'm going to use my this now I really can get rid of this because I don't have to worry about getting glue all over my mat my new mat I don't want to keep them nice and pretty um, <laughs> they get they get pretty worn out around here Okay, so I'm just going to use my cute little uh, cuddle bug because it's small and uh, it fits on camera. Uh, I have a few of them. I have the Ebosser and I also have the uh, Grand Caliber, which I love. Okay, so on this one, we're using the, um, the Tim Holtz alterations. Uh, and this is the swirl design. I think you can still get this one. I think it came in a two-pack, actually. So you don't even have to wait until these are bone dry. I mean, they're pretty much dry right now. So what I'm going to do is uh, where it says the, the, the wording, this is right side up. So if you were to flip it, this will emboss the image and this will deboss if you reverse it. Uh, so I'm going to put it right side up with the letters up because I want it embossed. And... So in, the difference between, if you don't, uh, if you're not familiar, the difference between embossing, the embossing means that it's raised. Debossing means that it's a depression. So it goes in rather than raised up. So with some designs, you can't hardly tell which way is which. So in the cuddle bug, I'm using um, my C, my B, the embossing folder, and then another B. And you can see it gets a lot of use. <laughs> so we're just going to go ahead and roll that through, and it does not take much. So there we go. And we have, it's all shimmery and embossed. 
Now, the reason why we do this after is because uh, when you wet this, you could lose a lot of that um, um, impression. A lot of that embossing could, you know, kind of, uh, you could lose a lot of that if you were to mist it and get it wet after the fact. Whereas uh, when you, when you uh, emboss a piece that is uh, wet or, or slight, slightly damp, like these are, uh, you tend to get a deeper, better impression. So that's why we want to do our misting or sponge painting first. So again, you need two large, two medium, and two small for each one of these. And we have one more to go. This little cuddle book is used so much because it's so tiny. It's so easily portable. It just, it stays so close to you. <laughs> okay, so that's all we need for that one. And now my next little tool I'm going to show you is something um, that I picked up at Joann's. Now this is just foam. It's not anything fancy. It's like a dollar fifty for a whole a big piece. This this was cut into either four or six pieces. Uh, I four or six mattings that I got, and you can see on here that it's quarter inch thick. You can't hardly see it on here, but it is quarter inch thick foam uh, and it comes in multiple colors I always get black because I don't like to it to look dirty <laughs> so anyways what we're going to do here is all we're going to do is use a piercing tool uh, this is the memory keepers one and I'm just going to find about the center and I'm just going to poke through it and I'm going to push it all the way through to make a decent little size hole and I'm going to do that to all six pieces now again be careful those even though we've reinforced those little leaves we still want to be gentle with them we don't want them to rip off so we're just looking for center ish does not have to be perfect the little ones you really gotta be careful of Okay, so we have all those, and we're going to go ahead and take one of our homemade brads, and we're going to go through our first one, and we're just going to stack these in an order that is appealing. Now, I there are there's a long leaf on here, and you can see that this is the long leaf, and there's also a short leaf that is right next to right or almost diagonal from it so I try to alternate I try to put the long leaf next to the short leaf so that it's a little more balanced uh, so there you can shift them around if you need I'm going to give it another twist if I can there we go and that looks better to me so you just kind of play with these gently. <laughs> you play with them gently and you kind of figure out where you want everything to line up. And once you get them on there, you can still shift them a little bit. But you should try to um, get them shifted before. See, this one shifted again when I added that last one. Again, you don't want to rip your leaves. Okay, so let's go ahead and put a long, we've got kind of a blank spot over here. So I'm going to add this one over here. And you know, the, the random kind of feel to it is okay. Let's see, I want to go ahead and kind of mesh these up. And that looks good to me. Okay, so I'm going to push that one all the way through, and there we have our brad sticking up. We're just going to open that up nice and flat. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it in my palm, and I'm going to push, and I'm just going to kind of round it up 
gently again. And then on the inside, I want to kind of pull those centers up in there so that we can kind of get a little bit of shape going on. But really what I'm looking to do is separate. I'm looking to separate uh, some of these leaves so that I can apply my, um, my stickles, my glitter glue to my leaves without them touching and gluing them together too much. It's going to happen a little bit, no matter what you do. Now you can, uh, and the first ones I did, look how, look how pretty that is. So you can see it just completely came to life. I just completely skipped right over that. Isn't that just so pretty? So it, it, it came a long way from just plain white paper, didn't it? And, and uh, a junky little uh, office brad uh, looks pretty awesome. <laughs> and a little bit of acrylic paint. I mean, a really little bit of acrylic paint. So uh, let's go ahead and um, we're going to, on the original one, I used uh, Studio G. And this one, let me go ahead and show you. It, I don't think it had a name on there. But here is the item number. If you want to write it down and you want to look for this one, but this one is just kind of a clear glitter, which is, seems to be hard to find. I keep on finding just tons and tons of iridescent glitter, uh, which this is what I'm going to use because there's just not a lot of this left because I've done so many flowers with it. And this one has kind of like the blues and greens and stuff. And I just wanted not white, but just kind of clear glitter, not silver. So on here, let me try to zoom in on this. I am just not even careful about this. I just trace the edges. And I try not to get too stingy with it, but not too globby. Let me show you. You see, it's not, uh, I don't, you don't have to, you don't have to spend a half hour, um, you know, adding your glitter to this. I mean, it really should be something. It doesn't look any better. Let's just put it that way. I've done it both ways and I have added my glitter to my pieces before I assembled them. And in my opinion, it just takes longer and it's a waste of glitter because you only see what you're going to see. And so when I'm doing this, I'm only covering the parts of the leaves that you can see. Again, I'm going to lift this guy up a little bit. So we're only applying the, gl the glitter to the parts that you can see. So there's no waste and uh, it's much quicker. And the effect, in my opinion, is no, di no different than, uh, you know, when, when I was taking a half hour to make each one of these. So... Of course, you still, I don't know, it probably still, with the die cutting and everything, it probably still takes you that, but maybe it takes, uh, you know, half hour instead of 45 minutes now. It takes a little less time. Plus, you don't have to wait for them to dry uh, if you add your glitter glue um, or stickles uh, while it's already assembled. You don't have to wait for it to dry in order to come back and add your pieces. It is you just put it aside and let it be. It's, so it's a whole nother step that you can kind of skip over. You don't have to have that waiting, which I am not a patient person. I always have far too many things to do and nowhere near enough time as, you know, most of the world. I'm always ready for the next thing. <laughs> Or at least in spirit, I'm ready for it. <laughs> okay, so all I've I've covered everything except for it cut, and I might have just been off camera with that. Sorry about that. I was focused on what I was doing. Uh, you can see I got kind of thick with it, but not globby. So I did all except for this very last leaf that I was hanging on to on the back, and so I'm just going to go ahead and get him done, and I'm going to set him aside and let them dry and he's going to be beautiful. So uh, then when I go to attach this guy down, he's going to go down just like this and I'm just going to attach him straight down. I'm going to apply a nice uh, um, uh, dime size uh, bit of E6000 on the back of where the brad is and I'm just going to glue him down wherever I want him. So that is the poinsettia. 
Okay, so let's go ahead and put some of this stuff away. Let's go ahead and uh, take a little break and we'll come back and um, we will go over um, the layered snowflake and possibly the uh, frosted snowflakes. So we will see you back here for video number three.